Before I start, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so. okay. Okay. So before I start, I just want to pray. Okay. Father, Lord, take the stage. Have your Holy Spirit use me. I am a vessel. At the end of this time together with my brothers and sisters, may each person have a desire to know you more. You are not just the creator of the universe, but the father who's interested in each one of us, in each minute part of our lives. May we leave here with a commitment to spend more time with you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, I've got it written down because I'm a bit nervous. You can see I'm a bit shaky. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't be because I teach teenagers. So, you know, it, I, it, this should be easy, but it, it's a bit difficult. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, Rami, to um, speak about the God. I've been asking the Holy Spirit to direct me to a topic that I could speak on. I wanted to talk about my testimony because the person you see talking today has been on a major journey. And some of the things that God has done with me and sorted out with me, if I share with you, you'd be quite gobsmacked. But the Holy Spirit reminded me that I'm not the same person who came to know the Lord 14 years ago. He has been the potter and I have been the clay, very, sometimes very unwillingly. He has had to mold me many times and the pot has broken many times. He, my cousin who I met, um, after, you know, who was a childhood friend and I met with her of about three or four years ago and she's a Christian. And when she, after she left me, um, she said to me, she sent me a text and she said, um, your journey has been from the pit to the palace. And the Holy Spirit wanted me to talk to you about how this change has happened and how do I walk with the Lord every day. I do not want to boast about anything, but as Paul says, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And I give the glory to God for the changes that have happened in my life. I'm still a work in progress, but the method that I have used has worked for me and I thought I would share it with you, okay? So after I got saved, I used to go to church every Sunday. I used to listen to all the messages and I used to listen to a lot of messages online. T.D. Jakes, was my favorite. I used to listen to him all the time. He's, he was funny, he was serious, and he spoke about real life issues. And he gave some good strategies to use. I used to also listen to Joel Austin. He was so motivational. I loved his motivational messages. But this was good. But when I hit trouble, I had nothing to hold on to. These were, not, these were not tangible things for me. I would forget the message. Often I made wrong choices and then I would feel guilty. This was a cycle of my life. I would, it, it was like a roller coaster. I would go up and down, you know. I would do the wrong thing, then I feel guilty, then I wouldn't pray, then I would come back. But you know, the story of the prodigal son was me. God was there 
always with open arms, however bad. And some of the things, if I, some of you know, some of you don't know, if I tell you, you'll be shocked. But God always forgave me. Then one day, so I, this cycle was going on and I wanted to break free. Then one day when I was cleaning my fridge, this was going back about four of, about, no, about five years ago, when I was cleaning my fridge, the Holy Spirit nudged me. It went something like this. So I'm very particular about the food in my fridge, the sell by date. If the date says it's over, it's over, it's going in the bin. Even if it means you can have it for another day or two. You know, if grapes have a sell by date, I will bin the grapes, right? So that's how it is. So I was checking the food and throwing it out of the fridge and the Holy Spirit nudged me and said, you're concerned about your body. When was the last time you put fresh food into your spirit? Okay. You need fresh word from God every day to renew yourself. So I decided to download the Bible app and I started following the devotional plans. This worked for a while. The devotional plans were good. I wouldn't, you know, any, anyone reading a devotional plan, I would say go for it. I realized that I believed in the Bible cover to cover. But if someone asked me how regularly did I study the Bible diligently, the answer would be never. Okay, I would read the Bible verse, I read the devotional, and then, you know, there would be, you know, trusting God, don't lean on your own understanding and an explanation. I would remember it, but I never knew the context, I never knew the background, nothing. I knew nothing. Study. In the Bible and quiet time, I realized, is two, are two different things. Quiet time with the Lord is usually a short devotional. And then you would pray, read the Bible and pray for about 10 to 20 minutes. Okay. But studying the Bible was something different. And this was something I realized that I needed to do for my personal growth. And that is why I thought I would share it with you. So I decided in order to break out of the cycle of ups and downs, yeah, in addition to my quiet time every day, that I would make time to study the word of God diligently and then apply it to my life. Initially, it was hard to find time. I am very busy. That's what I tell myself every day. I am very busy. So I decided to keep a, a diary of what do I do in my 24 hours? Okay, and what I found was I spent about three to four hours a day on my phone, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, I would spend about three to four hours a day. I would then spend about two hours a day watching TV, including the news. Okay, so that's about six hours a day. And considering I sleep eight hours. Okay, so I realized I needed to make some adjustments in my life. Um, so I, um, I decided I had to make some adjustments in my life if I was going to grow in this walk with God. And as Paul says in 2 Timothy, all scripture is God breathed, right? And it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training us in righteousness, right? So I decided, okay, I better spend some time with this Bible of mine, okay? As you all know, it's possible to know the word of God, but not know the God of the word, yeah? When we read the word of God, our goal has to be to become more like Jesus with our attitudes, our values, our speech. You know, you can read... A devotional, you can read the Bible, but if our speech is, oh God, I'm so tired today, or, you know, I don't think this is ever going to work out. Our speech is not with the, what God wants for our lives, okay? When God changes your life, yeah, and when he comes into your life and starts speaking to you through his word, yeah, we realize the real purpose of our life what true joy is and what it means for God to change the world through us. 
These are some of the things I've realized spending time with God, reading his word. So when, when we study the word of God, firstly, we need to look at our attitude, right? So when I started studying the word of God, I wanted to learn um, something to impress other people, right? I wanted to impress people with my knowledge, okay? So whenever I had a chance to spit it out to somebody, I would give it, right? Because I knew the word of God. <laughs> Instead, we need to go into the word to find out what God says for us. And this is why I prefer studying the word of God because it's for me. You know, it's not for some, what God says to me might be totally different to what God says to you. Okay. So reading for me, a devotional was like God spoke to that person who wrote it, not to me. Or listening to the study word. Yeah, how does that apply to me? So that was something. And I'm not condemning anyone. Okay. So please don't misunderstand me this was something i found for myself so when you decide to do something you always have to prepare like you guys have launched this new ministry i'm sure you spend time preparing for it you know for anything to work we have to spend time preparing so i decided that firstly i needed to have a regular study time so i set aside a saturday morning because saturday morning was a good time for me I found a notebook, so I have my notebook, I write everything down, and I would say a short prayer, and I would say like Psalm 139, 23, search my heart to God, I don't know why I asked him to search my heart, because some of the things that he showed me, you know, it wasn't nice, so it was, you know, search my heart to God, and know, try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Right. So I used to say that all the time, you know, and God has shown me many things about myself, which I, I've had to put right. And putting it right with the Holy Spirit is so easy. You know, he just makes it happen. And it just when I've tried to put things right myself, it never goes well. Right. But the Holy Spirit, when he works with you, he changes things and it's effortless Christianity. Yeah. And then I was telling somebody about this at work, a colleague of mine, she's a 23 year old and she's a Christian. And I was telling her about, I want to study the Bible. And then the next day she comes along and she gives me a study Bible. Those of you who are on Marcus's course, I've shared the study Bible with you and said, you know, it's a really good investment. So if anyone, you know, anyone's birthday is coming up, anyone's, um, if you don't have a study Bible, Christmas, go for it, get to study Bible, treat yourself. So once I decided to do, um, uh, study the Bible, I Googled to see what are the different ways I could do it. And there were loads of different methods, but the one that stood out for me was the devotional method. And the devotional method is about knowledge and application. You, there's no point getting knowledge in your head if you're not going to apply it to your daily life, okay? Um, Bible study... Uh, without um, with, without application can be dangerous and knowledge puffs you up. And as Paul said, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Okay. And when you apply that knowledge, it is the love that you apply. 1 Corinthians 8. 1. The Bible also tells us that the devil knows the word intellectually. He knows it in his mind. He used it on Jesus in Matthew 4 when he tried to tempt Jesus. So I found um, application of what I study, hard work, because the Satan fought me viciously. Satan knows what, that as long as you are, that you are content with merely having head knowledge of the word, you are not much of a threat to his plan, okay? But as soon as you are serious, making changes in your life, he will fight you tooth and nail. And I found that he fought me tooth and nail. He hates doers of the word. He will let you study the Bible, all you desire, as long as you do not ask yourself, now, what am I going to do with what I have learned? So you need to apply the word of God, not because you feel like it on the days you want to, 
or on a week you want to, but because you know God expects it of you. He saved us for a reason, but he expects us to apply what we've got from that. Applied Bible study as an act of the will leads to maturity and is a basis of stability in your Christian life. So I'm going to now, right, when we teach, when I teach my students, I do the theory bit and then I do the practice bit. Yeah, because we've got to put the theory into practice. All right. So I thought I would share the devotional method that I use, and then we're going to put it into practice. So that's why I said to you guys, please bring your Bible, pen and paper. So Rami, can I share? Okay, so can you hear me? Yeah. Ah, stop, 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 stop. Sorry, I forgot to put the sound. Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. So, how do, what's happened here now? Okay, so using the devotional method, there's four steps, okay? So the first step is that you pray for insight on how to apply the passage that you're going to read. So before you start reading the passage, and usually I use a chapter that um, I would use, um, read. So I would pray and, you know, say, you know, me, I would use Psalm 139 and say, search my heart to God and show me what is it that you want me to learn from this, okay? Then I would meditate on the chapter that, I've, that I have read or studied, okay? Then I would write out an application. How would I apply this, okay? And then I would memorize a key verse for my study. So these are the four steps that I would follow or I follow on a regular basis when I study my Bible. Can I swap? Yeah? Okay. Margie, I like it because I, I, you're my prompt. <laughs> So some tips on meditation, okay? So visualize what you read. So for example, I was reading 2, uh, 2 Samuel 7, and it's about God's promise to David. So David wanted to build a temple for the Lord, but instead God said he did not want the house. He wanted David to unify and lead Israel. This scene was of God talking, God and David talking. I was visualizing it. It was like God, what David wanted to do was a very big thing to please God. I mean, build a temple for him. Wow, that must have been expensive, right? But God's thoughts were different. And, you know, it reminded me of Isaiah 55, 8, 9. You know, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Yeah. And I was thinking, how would, how would David have felt? Was, do you think David would have got annoyed? But David was very accepting of it. So what made him so accepting of it? So I sort of, in my meditation, I was like thinking, visualizing this whole scene and thinking about it, okay? So I would say, when you read a passage, meditate on it, visualize it, close your eyes, think about it. When you start visualizing a scene, the scripture comes alive. You feel part of it. You feel like you belong there. You can ask yourself, is there a command to obey? Is there something God is telling you to obey? And obeying is really difficult. So you need the Holy Spirit to help you to obey. Is there a promise to claim? Is there something that we can use in our daily prayer, that a promise that God has given us in that passage? OK, 
Okay. Some tips on application. Okay. Your application has to be personal. It has to be for you, not for X, not for Y. It has to be something practical. It has to be something possible and it has to be something provable. So the provable part, what I would say to you is it's great if you could have an accountability partner, right? So for me, Vijay, my husband is my accountability partner. Sometimes when I say things, he will say, but Manju, today you read this and you said you were not going to do this. Now in the beginning, it's quite annoying because I don't want to be corrected, but it, it's good because it's a reminder of what, you know, what has God said and what is it that I have decided to make a change? Because change is really hard, you know, and, you know, your thoughts and your words, you constantly need that. Um, practical, it has to be something that's doable, okay? You know, don't aim for the moon and the stars. It, you will get there, but you have to climb, you know, walk first. So, for example, when I was reading 2.7 about God's promise, okay, David's request was good, but God said no. This does not mean that God rejected David. In fact, God was planning to do something even greater in David's life than allowing him the prestige of a building. Although God turned down David's request, he promised to continue the house of David forever. So the we may come to God with certain prayers of asking for X, Y, or Z. And if God does not answer that, don't be discouraged because God's plan is far greater than anything that you could ever dream or imagine. So my application when I read it was, I need to use positive words when I speak to others about my circumstance. I will trust God when my prayer is not answered because God is directing me to a greater purpose in my life. And I have continuously put this into practice because many times some of the things I have prayed for, as I've shared with you guys, have taken seven years to happen, yeah? And it, it, it can be very frustrating, but trusting God that when my prayer is not answered, he's directing something behind the scenes, okay? So now comes, what time is it? Do I have time? Yeah, okay. So now comes the practical bit, okay? That each of you is going to do it. You can do it in partners if you're together, if you're doing it on your own. We're going to do some um, application, all right? So I've chosen four pages. Luke 12, 22 to 34. Judges 6, 1 to 18. Acts 12, 1 to 11, and Titus 3, 1 to 6. I would like those of you who have a Bible to read this passage, okay? And I would like you to, when we give feedback, I would like, we don't have time to go through the meditation, okay? And, um, you know, the um, sort of, the prayer bit okay i'm just jumping because of sh shortage of time but what i would like you to when you give feedback is tell me or share with everybody else how would you apply this passage to your life your current circumstance how would you apply so freedom of choice you can choose whichever passage you want to, to choose okay and i'm going to give you uh, what time is it Okay, you've got 10 minutes. Okay, so clock starts now. 10 minutes goes. Sorry, I've taken it off the screen. Would somebody want yes. me to put this share yes, up? Please. Put it back up, yeah. Put it up. Okay. Prefer this is back at three. Back at three.
If you're like me, it took me a while to find judges. 